go right there. Oh, hi. Hi. Uh, I'm doing something that I'm real scared of, Tori. Why are you scared? Making a video with a new camera. Do you think I should be scared? No, I'm not scared. What if your spray tan wore off? Then would you be scared? Yeah. You would be. Same reasonable fear. Relax and come back here and we can take a picture together. Cheese! Don't call me mom. What's my name? I just want to call you mom. Please don't. Yes, call me mom. Me. Don't call mom, me mom. Mom, I just want to call you mom. No, Tori, you're too you're too little to just call me mom. It makes me sad. I'm not little. You're a little little. You're little enough that you don't have to call me mom. I have to. I got your name, mom. No, my name's mom. Me. No, it's mom. I just don't even know what to say about that. That's not do not stand on that. Just walking around, getting used to the camera, letting you see the disaster that is my rental home. I tried to make a video this morning of um, my bun and the lighting in here was so bad because I could only have the camera in one place because I was trying to hide my messy bathroom. But I think that the, the truth is I just need to not hide any part of me, right? This is what you wanna see is how um, unglamorous and normal my life is and how messy my closet is and how snappy I get with my children. Jordan challenged me. Uh, I will put his link in here. He challenged me to just make, <gasps> Tori, to just make this video before I spray tanned, before I felt comfortable. If you watched my IG story, you see how, what a baby I was being about the whole thing. But um, challenge taken, I'm just doing it. Right, Tori? Yeah. We're just doing it. Uh, Tori, is there anything you would like to share? Um, no. The whole reason I'm making this video is because I've interviewed so many people. Amanda now interviews people um, before they get to me. Um, and when I'm interviewing people and it's going bad, after the interview is over, I wanna be able to take off my hat uh, as the president of the company or the interviewer. And I want to be able to tell people like all of the things that they're doing wrong in their interviews. And this is just not about getting a job with me. It's about getting a good job anywhere. And don't you find it interesting that people don't realize what they're doing wrong? No one ever tells them. If you're not successful in an interview, they're not gonna call you back and say why. Right. So no one ever tells <laughs> them. But I feel like I can't tell them. I don't want to oh, get in yeah, trouble yeah. with TWC. I don't know if there's things like you can or should tell them or you can't. Uh, oh, Kyle's drinking wine too. Oh, cheers. Not Happy hour around here. I know, Kyle and the other Amanda are going to Vegas. Um, so, let me have a sip of wine so I can calm down. I'm getting a little nervous. This is technically my first vlog, even though I have somebody in the room with me because I'm not ready to do it by myself. Um, but at least the camera's sitting here and it won't feel as produced, right? You're like all up in my face. Okay, so the whole process does not start when you enter the, the room of the person you're interviewing. It starts from the very beginning with the resume and with how you send out the resumes. Putting out your resume, I'm, we're on air, we're on air. <laughs> He's like, you need to put the on air sign out there. Okay, so giving out your resume should be a very special thing okay putting out your resume is just like when you're dating guys or girls no one no one wants to date somebody who's willing to take anybody who's just throwing themselves at anything that moves and on the other hand you wouldn't want to be with anybody who is willing to accept 
a person who's willing to throw themselves at you. Like it's, mm -hmm. it's desperation um, and laziness really are super unattractive both in dating and in um, applying for a job. So make sure that you're actually sending your resumes out to companies that you are interested in. You are either going to end up in a really crappy place if they don't care that you don't care or um, they're gonna see right through it. Like people that are just throwing their resumes at me without a cover letter, without studying our company, without knowing anything, research the company. That's exactly it. But the first thing is don't be a resume Don't throw your resume out to everybody. Make sure in frame, I'm by myself now, Amanda left me. Um, so throwing your resume out there to everybody and just seeing what sticks is literally like that person at the bar who is hitting on every single person that they see. It's so unattractive. It's lazy and it's desperate and it's unattractive, so don't do that. Um, okay, so the next step is, just like showing up for a date, you should show up on time or a little bit early. Do not show up 30 minutes early to an interview. I know you think you're doing a really good thing because you think, well, if I'm early, they're gonna see that I really care and that I'm really responsible. No, it's actually intrusive because I guarantee you the person that you're interviewing with is not just sitting around waiting to interview you. So don't don't show up too early. I, In my opinion, I think you should show up like three to five minutes early, that's it. 10 minutes early, you're pushing being rude. So don't be too early. Definitely don't be late and definitely don't no show. It doesn't matter, always communicate. I mean, I was just telling yes. them not to be too early. I think you should show up three to five minutes early, that's it. Oh, Even I 10 agree. minutes early is too early. Minutes. I do. Okay. At 10, at, no, no, because most, I don't, 10 minutes early, I don't think it's rude, but I think 10 minutes early, you're still kind of pushing, like, I feel stressed out if I know somebody is waiting for me. Um, definitely not 10 minutes late, definitely not three minutes late. If, it, if the dot hits whatever time you're supposed to be there and you're not there, not good. Really, really bad impression. Um, in the interview, freaking look your best. You should always look your best, always, all the time, in my opinion. I went and had dinner with a friend yesterday and um, she's really kind of upped her game and started taking better care of herself. And I told her how proud of her I was. And she's like, you know, I, I realized that I represent my own brand. I'm like, yes. And you never know who you're gonna meet. You never know who you're gonna leave an impression on. So in my opinion, every single day, you should put effort into what you look like because you are representing your own brand. And you don't ever know who you're gonna run into and what impression you're going to meet. And while I'm going down the path of what seems shallow but is not, it's actually just a fact that I think some people don't talk about. Um, I think people trust me more, not because I'm pretty, but because I take care of myself, because you're I take together. pride in my appearance, I guarantee you. I get, I use my looks to my advantage. I know I'm going to get in a door because of how I look. And it doesn't have anything to do with my actual look. It has to do with me taking care of myself. Mm -hmm. So I use that as a tool to get where I need to go. Everybody should, because people that take care of themselves, I think um, it's like one of those silent auras that's about you, you just trust them. If they take care of themselves, you feel like they're gonna take care of your company. As silly as that sounds, it's professional. It's just what you need to do. So look your best. Uh, I, I would don't be, catfish a company either. No, don't. Don't catfish a company. No, catfish your man. Who, however you, however you look on your uh, profile when you're trying to find a man, that's who you should be, and that's what you should represent. If you are putting the prettiest picture that you have out there, that's 20 pounds lighter and with a full face of makeup, and you walk in and you're 20 pounds, this is dating, not job, dating, dating, dating. And you walk in and you're 20 pounds heavier with no makeup on, why would you do that? And if you're representing that part of yourself, the best version of yourself, if that's where you wanna be, go be that person. Don't present that to everybody else and then walk in the door and be something totally different. I mean, that's insane. And don't come in here in my interview and dress up well and put makeup on and then I hire you and you decide to take makeup off. Don't do that. Don't do that. I want to know who, who I'm, who I'm, who I'm getting in a relationship with. Entering our company and entering any good company is exactly the same as entering into a relationship. So whoever you are, when I'm interviewing you, that's who, that's who I expect um, to be. You know, a year from now, six months from now, ten years from now. Um, okay, so look your best. I would go a little softer. I probably would do a red lip for an interview, even though I'm sitting here with a red lip now. I probably wouldn't. I'd just be a little softer. I'd be very presentable. You don't want to 
feel like you're hiding under a mask of makeup. Your body language is everything. If they offer you a drink, take a drink. Set your purse down if they offer you water or coffee, even if you're not thirsty, accept the water or coffee. For me, it makes me feel like if they don't accept water or coffee, I know they're nervous, but it ends up making me nervous, and I want everybody to just feel like it's, it's my welcome extension to you, and I want you to accept that welcome extension. So if they offer water or coffee, take it. It's a small thing, but I promise it matters. Um, next, your body language. Um, Make sure you're sitting up tall, shoulders back, um, sit confidently. And if you don't know if you sit confidently, then practice it in the mirror. Practice yourself on film and make sure that how you sit is confident and strong and open to listening to what the other person has to say. It's the same with being on a date. Sit confident and strong and open. When you have everything that you do, you are representing yourself. So uh, confidence is a very, very, very attractive quality. And even if you're nervous, you can still be nervous and confident. Like I, me, right I now. I think that you should also go into a location that you're applying for if you have the opportunity. I mean, if you're applying for a big corporate your research. business, you aren't gonna walk into their corporate office right. you know, and walk around. But if you're applying for a position here at a salon, go to a salon, go check out the it, location. Look at, and look at what they're wearing that you can kind of mimic that when you come in an interview. Don't come in wearing jeans or dress for the job sneakers. you want. Do your research. Exactly. And this may sound like a lot of work to go in for a job interview, but hello, this is a job interview. You're entering into a relationship. You should care about the company that you're entering into and expect that it's gonna be a good place for you <coughs> to be in. So it should be worth your time in researching these <coughs> these little things. Um, I totally agree with that. I. I I feel like if I had to, I feel like I could go get my foot in any door and I feel like I could interview well because I know how to deal with people. And when I want something, even though I'm not very book smart, I'm just not, I'm super, super smart when it comes to people. And I know when I want something and I know how to get it. You should know what you want and you should be bringing something to the table. Who you're presenting, it's not like, okay, I'm gonna do this job and that's gonna be it, and you're gonna pay me a paycheck, that's so, if, if that's what you want, then find a company that, that wants that. If you want something more, you better be bringing something extra to the table. Come with questions, have questions. Let me tell you that when I'm asking people interview questions, and I'm gonna tell you this because um, I'm not giving away any secrets, and I don't think anybody can BS me. I really don't, so I'm giving you what I'm looking for when I'm interviewing people. I'm looking for people to be humble, hungry, and smart. There's a book, I think I've let somebody have it. Oh, I gave it away. When I let somebody go, I gave her that book. I said, here, this is the problem that we're having with you. You need to read this book. She didn't want to read the book. She still has the book. I hope that if she happens to watch this, she ends up reading it. It's the best book ever, The Ideal Team Player. Um, and there's a story in the front and in the back it explains humble, hungry, and smart. Humble um, means that you're confident enough in, in yourself to know what you bring to the table and what you can add to the team. Humility, I think I've already talked about this in another in another video. Okay, humble, hungry, uh, okay, let me see. Now I'm what getting nervous watch about you. Huh? What oh, that's true. Yeah. Um, so humble, you should know your worth. It's not just, it's not, humble is not um, timid. If you don't know your worth, that you're lacking humility on the opposite end of the spectrum. Um, so you need to be humble and be ready to join the team. You need to be hungry, but you need to be hungry not only for yourself, but for the team. You can be super hungry, but if all you care about is you, I'm gonna know that and that's gonna be a turnoff for me. I'm gonna know that. Um, and being smart is not book smart, because remember, I told you, I'm not book smart. And I don't care, I, when you're interviewing with me, um, I wanna know what your experience is, but I'm not, I've never been a person to look at people's degrees. I wanna look at their experience, and then when I speak to them, that's what I'm trying to get to know. Um, and, but smart, okay, so it's not about being book smart, it's not about what degrees you have, it's about being smart with people and understanding how anything and everything you do will and does have an effect on other people. So if I say something, I'm very aware in the room of how, how other people will be reacting and, and hear those things. Um, being smart, being people smart, and, and uh, what, emotional intelligence, EQ, if you will, is very, very important. And some people have different traits that 
that make up a, a really strong person and it's going to be different for everybody but those are the things that i'm looking for when i'm asking questions i'm not looking for specific answers i'm looking for the way that you answer the question there literally are no wrong answers in an interview no wrong answers uh, the only way you can really bomb is if you're lying or if you're not being honest and if you can't be honest and you can't admit your own faults or, or speak freely you're losing me you're losing me i need to feel like there's some sense of vulnerability in an interview amanda when you're interviewing people what do you when something is going really wrong what are the things that are going wrong to you what are I some want, of the common things i want people to think about the answers that they give me but I also don't want them to not have an answer or seem Do like Do people not have answers a lot I've because had, they're afraid of answering it wrong? I don't know if it is that they're putting too much thought into it and they're being, <clears throat> they're overwhelming themselves or mm -hmm. if they just don't have an answer. But I think for the most part, all interviews are similar mm -hmm. in what they ask. Right. And so I feel like <coughs> if you really want the job you are prepared to answer those normal questions doesn't matter how they're asked they usually coincide but if people sound robotic <laughs> to me that's wrong right like, it's rehearsed right i want you to be genuine give honest answers yeah. and it doesn't matter if you don't know like, something say i literally i have no idea i can't remember i'm not sure yeah honest I, answers i want it to be a comfortable interview right i always think about the interview i had with you it just seemed like we were just hanging out right but just everything that you were side. saying that's exactly it i was getting to know you and it yeah. wasn't about it wasn't about what you said it was how you said it and why you said it i was collecting information about who you are as a yeah. person that's <laughs> your experience is a big thing but i can teach a skill i can teach you how to do a job i cannot teach you to be humble hungry and smart i don't have the time for that i think those traits can be grown but i don't have the time on my team um to have somebody lack a lot in those areas and let me tell you i've hired a lot a lot a lot of wrong people and that's not the person who's come in that's not their fault it's my fault for not catching things um, just I was at Entree Leadership and one of the guys uh, was talking about hiring people and um, it, he's saying I will never let the same crazy in the door twice and that's exactly it. I've made many many mistakes and I will continue to make mistakes in hiring but I will not make the same mistake twice. So um, just be yourself. Know that the most, you know, just like you are dressing um, to represent your brand, you, you are what I want. I don't want somebody to fill a job position. I wanna know who you are and what you bring to the table. And be confident in your strengths. Go all in on your strengths. I don't know how to work Word. I don't know how to work Excel. I barely know how to send a proper email. But that's, that's okay and I can admit that. My strength is with people and in communication and that is what I focus on. It took me a very, very, very long time to get comfortable with the things that I'm not great at, all the things that Steven is really great at, that those are not my strengths. Um, but once I started to go all in on what I knew it was good at and ask for help and have other people do the things that I can't do, that's when I really, really, really started to become a good leader. And when you go all in on what you're good at, that's when you're going to shine. Be willing, you have to know yourself. If you don't know yourself, if you're not aware enough of yourself, I don't want you on my team. I don't have time to teach somebody self-awareness. That's something I don't know that can be taught. I think it can. I think self-awareness can be learned, I but I think it's a very, time. very slow process yeah. and ain't nobody got time for that here. Um, I think talking as well. I don't like when, <clears throat> and I don't, say, I don't know if I'm saying this right, but <laughs> if all they're doing is just answering, I want you to be engaged in the conversation, mm -hmm. show interest, show passion. I mean, yes. or else it just seems like you just submitted your resume to 20 different listings and right. we just have to call you back. Exactly. Ew. And that's so, yeah. don't waste my time. If you want a job, don't come in here. If you want to work for Blue Line Salon Studios, come see me. I'm not here to give people jobs. I'm here to grow a team to build a freaking empire, right? Yeah. Um, when the interview ends, stand up, shake their hands. We forgot to talk about the handshake. This is so important. Take notes. This is in um, dating. This is in meeting business people. 
the proper way to shake a hand when you're shaking a woman's hand, when you're shaking another woman's hand, when you're shaking a man's hand, should all be the same in my opinion. You are aware of the how hard the other person is squeezing you, but give a, a firm handshake and men, think men are watching this but men if you're watching this when you're shaking a woman's hand let me put my entire hand in your hand don't stop me short I don't shake like this I'm not royalty I don't want you to kiss my hand I don't you just don't you hate when people how do you shake hands shake my hand good you you uh you kind of do the man shake you're bending my hand you are I didn't mean to bend it Okay. I think it's because I'm a over you. there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, because you're not, above. <laughs> not because I'm above. Just higher. But I, I like a, a good firm, like I like a good man handshake, and and they shake me like another man's hand. Don't, don't. I shaking I shake, women. Okay. I think women should all just learn how to shake hands properly. Practice shaking a man's hand. Well, don't be a wet noodle. No wet noodles. No wet noodles. Do something. Don't stick your hand out and leave it like that. I feel like I'm shaking dead bodies sometimes. I don't know. I don't, I don't understand, understand that. And what if we both went in with a dead fish shake? What are we going to do? Slap our hands? <laughs> Follow up with a thank you email the next day. Say thank you. I think that's important. Um, and yeah, don't bug people. Don't bug people. If somebody says no, take no for an answer. If you have genuine questions about what went wrong, I think it's totally okay to say, listen, I want to sharpen my interview skills. Can you uh, give me some honest feedback about how my interview went or why you <laughs> why you didn't feel I was right for this position. I think that's totally okay and I think you should be asking asking people for feedback. Um, and then hopefully you get a job. Hopefully these tips help you. Now, let's talk more about dating and, and even being married and being in a good relationship. Um, all of these things apply. When you're dating, you should look your best. You should bring your best, but you should always be your best, so that shouldn't be anything new. And you should be very picky about who you date and who you give your time to. Why would you give your time to everybody? Just like you're not gonna give your resumes to everybody because we just don't do that with particular people. Um, when you're on a date, you need to be able to have good, engaging conversation. It's not all about you. You need to ask questions. The best people, the the... The people that feel the warmest are the people that ask genuine questions about you. That's what makes people comfortable. So I know you're probably nervous, but ask the other person really, really good, interesting questions. Care what they have to say. Start conversations based on those questions. Um, don't be too early. Definitely don't be late. And okay, so say you've been dating somebody or you're married. I think the, the healthiest thing you can do for your relationship is invest in yourself and stay interesting. If you've been married or with a person for a year or five years or 10 years and um, all you talk about is the, the same work that you do every day, work should be interesting. You should do something interesting with work, but you need to have things that, that what makes you you? Are you reading books that your husband or boyfriend isn't reading? Are you, you know, think about when you're getting to know somebody for the first time. If all you talked about on your first date was how many dirty diapers you've changed and how the laundry was piled up and um, how you've got to remember to take the dry cleaning in tomorrow, you would never date that person ever again because that's boring. Yes, that's real life, but what attracts you to somebody else is, is interest so stay interesting read different books have different hobbies and stay interesting i yeah i want steven to continue to be interested in me i want to surprise him not with act i mean i should surprise him more with like actual surprises but i want to be interesting i want him to want to hear what i have to say if i'm saying the same old things or things he already knows that's not interesting Think about first dates and getting to know people, but the only way you're gonna have more and more information to share with somebody is if you actually do things for yourself outside of your marriage, outside of your relationship, stay interesting. And that coincides with interviews or just trying tell to find me. a job in general. Yeah, tell me, tell me. Because, well, I mean, how do you grow you yourself professionally? Right. Grow your knowledge whatever. right and what are you going to teach us when yeah. you're joining our team what are you going to teach us yeah. i want to continually be able to, to teach steven things and not just about real housewives mm -hmm. about other <laughs> things and i do and I, he loves that about me he thinks i'm interesting he loves that i'm that i'm still as much as i depend on him and as much as i need him he loves how independent i am you should always have that part of yourself <coughs> that you work on and, and that is yours. I'm a mom, <coughs> I'm a wife, I'm a boss, 
but I am also my own private person and I love being with myself. I love spending time with myself. I love doing things that I love to do. I've realized that to be the best person, I have to take that time and spend with myself. So I think as women and men, although I don't think men are watching this, um, but I think it's so easy to get lost in the shuffle of every day. You really, really, really need to spend time with yourself and stay interesting. That's going to make you the best employee. That's going to make you the best girlfriend. That's gonna make you the best date. It's gonna make you the best wife. It's gonna make you the best mom. Just invest in yourself. Always, 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 always. What is the- Amanda is a YouTube aficionado. <laughs> I am not, obviously. I hope this feels better. You have to, okay. Can I ask you, uh, with me being all up in your grill, does this feel more personal? Even though I was still like sharing teachy things with you, does this feel more blog style? Cause that's really what I was going for. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. I feel like Share it with a friend, click the like button. Yeah, like it, click the like, share it with a friend who needs a job, needs a man, needs a husband. Ask them what has lost themselves. is the most, not necessarily unusual question that they were asked in an interview, oh, yeah. but a question that stood out to them. What were you asked? What? Yeah, that's a fantastic question. What is something that you've been asked in an interview that stood out to you? Um, and no, I didn't you even really ask think. that. I okay. Mean, that made you think uh, and I want to know what's the worst interview you ever you've ever had yeah. I think what makes for a bad interview you should be able to know that you probably are part of that bad interview I highly doubt it was just the other person although it could have been give me your honest feedback on this I like honest feedback so I know that I'm giving you guys what you want um, <laughs> I was talking with one of the other girls Tracy about Southern Charm and we were going back and forth we were like like, like tennis players with our thoughts on Southern Charm would you like um, like some girl talk recap of some of our favorite Bravo TV shows and stuff like that. Maybe yes, maybe no, give me feedback. Oh, um, I didn't even do an introduction. It's not, I mean, this is a blog, right?